G'day, I'm Glenn Morris from the Smart Energy Lab, and today in the studio, I've got Charlie here from Zenergy. G'day, Charlie. Hello, Glenn. <laughs> Good to see you again. You're a repeat offender. Um, I just don't learn. <laughs> you, you brought your sidekick along, I see. What's his face? <laughs> uh, uh, say hello, Dawson. <laughs> <laughs> he's way back there and he's going to be heckling me and, and uh, pointing uh, fingers at me and stuff during this uh, interview. Well, um, maybe we'll start with, just tell me a bit about the the, the, the story, the Zenergy story. You know, how did that come to be? Um, Semi-accidental, as all good things are. Mm -hmm. um, I've always been a bit of a, a greenie myself over the years and in former life I was an inverter designer and... Uh, wasn't that far too early back in the 80s when there was no money, no interest, and uh, it was just uh, not really a going thing. And I sort of got out of it and then got back in again into it in the mid 90s and uh, got out of it again. <laughs> so you mean uh, Power Electronics? Power Electronics, yeah. Yep. Uh, in various other companies and stuff I've had over the years. And, uh, and uh, we've been merrily um, working in another company, which is called Involve Audio, where we uh, uh, design and manufacture various interesting stuff um, and uh, we also did subcontract manufacture uh, for people uh, and design for customers and stuff who came in and one of our customers came in uh, one day he was an old friend of mine and uh, he identified in his opinion the next big thing was going to be energy storage ah, never, care, was it? never, never catch, catch on, on. Nah. no and uh, <laughs> Uh, well, we said, well, yeah, we'll think, we'll think about that. Yeah. And uh, we went away and uh, we had a look at all different sorts of alternatives, uh, you know, gravitational storage, uh, other forms of chemical storage, rotational storage, um, which is a bloody good idea, mm. but uh, looked to be like a $50,000 research pr process to make it not blow up. And, um, and other people were already onto that. And so... We started looking at other possible avenues and, you know, what was wrong and how we could fix it. And uh, at one stage we thought about, well, let's look at battery proximity to the solar cell array. Where's a good place to put the battery? We thought, well, let's put it underneath a solar panel, just as a, a thought bubble. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, put the whole thing, battery to solar panel, uh, invert a little micro inverse as one little package and make it modular and plug in and blah, blah, blah. So they could all add up and do their thing. Uh, but the big barrier to that process, and uh, we actually have a patent on something in that area, but the big barrier to that process was uh, temperature. Yeah. Um, that uh, upon research, we found that the temperature underneath a solar panel can get to at least five degrees hotter than what it is on the... Uh, on the sun side of the solar panel. Wow. Yeah. Because no, no, no heat, vent, cooling. Yeah, yeah. yeah, cooling. And traps air. Just, traps yeah. air and stuff like that, which is a, a great reason to keep a bit of air behind your solar panel because it increases its efficiency. Um, and um, we looked at that and uh, we started a little search. Well, could we find a battery that could take those sort of extreme temperatures? And So you're still looking for a solution for on-roof, panel. Yeah, because we're stubborn and silly. We thought, look, look. <laughs> Let's let's <laughs> let's go down this path a bit more. Yep. And because um, it seemed like a the streaker's excuse, it was a good it seemed like a good idea at the time. Yep. And um, we got one of our uh, engineers, Chris, onto it. Uh, Chris is a very very diverse fellow. Um, he's a mechanical engineer, product designer, but he dabbles in everything. Yes. And uh, uh, he um, just looked at various types of battery technology, and he came across LTO. A lithium titanate and uh ta -da. This is lithium titanate yep um and um it, it's it had many many good characteristics um you know including you know being able to withstand 60 65 degrees c not a problem and being able to go down to really really cold antarctic temperatures really to negative 40s and stuff like that wow yeah i didn't realize it'd go that cold okay. oh, yes well, it's um, good for here yeah. we've actually had <laughs> testing done 
um, formal lab testing at minus 18. Yeah. Um, so is that discharge? Uh, charge, discharge. And charge. Charge, discharge, minus, minus 18. Minus 18 Unbelievable. Um, yeah. Where I would hammer it uh, at 2C. Yep. Charge, discharging at 2C. Yeah. Uh, at minus 18. And I remember they did about 600 cycles of that. Yeah. And after 600 cycles, the capacity of the battery dropped by about 10% uh, overall. Uh, maybe a bit more, maybe, might be 15%. And then they, um, then they said, right, let's heat it up back to ambient. And guess what? The capacity came back. And, uh, so the only, only loss is capacity. You still could charge and discharge, but just not... Yeah, there was no problem in charge and discharge. Oh, okay. right. The overall storage capacity of the cell dropped. Yep. Um, say 10, might have been 15%, I can't actually remember. Right. And um, it would, uh, once you heated it back to 25 degrees C or 50 degrees C, the full capacity came back essentially and uh, it didn't seem to cause any nasties. We've got... Uh, some of these in Antarctica somewhere. Well, or Perisher. That was minus 18, I think, yeah, the record temperature. Uh, yeah, it, it could do Perisher, <laughs> not a problem. Um, so we were looking at all this, and yeah, it solves the temperature problem. Wow. And it, it seemed to solve the safety problems because you could um, do whatever you want and basically it's not going to uh, catch fire. And I've seen do, the do videos nasties. where people cut them in half uh, with an angle grinder yeah, and drilling while them. it's charging. Yeah, while it's charging, which I still can't fathom myself. <laughs> um, but... Uh, we've actually now got, um, in the process of replicating some of those tests at the factory. Yeah. Um, one of our guys, Max, has um, created his jig for that. It's just a matter of time now where he's going to be putting saws and hammers and nails through it. Yep. Um, but we've done pretty exhaustive testing on it and we haven't been able to fail it, but it, it can fail. Um, uh, the only way that you can, that we know of that you can make it uh, uh, fail is to... Um, uh, severely over voltage it and that, that means go from say 2.3 volts per cell to something we think north of uh, 7 or 8 volts across the cell and it will go bang um, and uh, but that's we're, we're still to define that actual bang point so it's a case of yeah uh, every, I think just about everything will go bang but I, uh, I've seen some wonderful comparisons in fact let me just grab a cell yeah. um, from back here mm -hmm. so Something like an 18650 cell mm -hmm. we've got here. It's, um, the, what is it, nickel manganese cobalt, cobalt I think. Yeah. yeah. So that's a NMC cell. Mm -hmm. GWL, I think they're in Germany, were doing some comparisons of overcharging one of these oh, and right. overcharging one of these. That's interesting. And this weeped. Like yes. this, a, a little bit of liquid came out. Yep. This, people were running. <laughs> this is like a firecracker. Really? <laughs> so in the for size yeah. comparison, that is way more dangerous than that. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting in itself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, <clears throat> as it turns out, though, um, we've gone nuts at our end. Uh, <clears throat> that We've got uh, multiple forms of over-voltage protection on this right now, um, and not just one, uh, and per cell right throughout the battery. But not only that, the case, <clears throat> like if we take our... Eon battery, which is sort of, I think it's about 1.6 something meters long. I've got a couple of just over here. Yeah. They're yeah. actually running the heater that we can probably hear. Have they? Yeah. <laughs> um, they, um, the case of that's, um, it's three millimeters thick aluminium. Yes. And it's, uh, it is IP65 sealed. So you can use it as a bumper on the road. So you, you can, can use it cars as a bollard. Down. Yeah, bollard. That's right. yeah. Um, but uh, if it did explode, um, it would release gas because it's got a, a strip on the side. Yes. Um, but that would act, that's that's more like a, 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 a controlled gas release and it's facing towards the wall. Ah, so that's the deflagration strategy. Deflagration, that's, that's, that, that, that's that big word you use. I know, I know. I just learned about that word. I'm going to look that up the, tonight. The definition of deflagration is it doesn't break the sound barrier. Or is it? An explosion yeah. breaks the sound barrier. Yeah. Deflagration is just uh, rapidly disassembling and venting with flames. You can tell my poor education because <laughs> uh, I remember way back when in high school a, a teacher once uh, called me uh, bombastic and uh, I, I didn't know what that meant. You thought it was a, a compliment. So, so, so I thought it was a compliment so <laughs> that night I went to look it up and I thought, yeah, all right, you're probably right, <laughs> bombastic. <laughs> Now, going back to um, voltage control, I guess it all comes down to the BMS. Now, we brought some uh, show and tell along. You've got yeah. a, uh, you've got a uh, control board there, I think. Uh, I have. Let's talk first um, for our... This looks a bit big. I know that. Um, 
I got a feeling that those <laughs> uh, those go through yeah, there like they, this. They do go through there like that. Let's just prop it up then. Yeah, that's a the battery is now a prop. Yep. This is uh, actually uh, hot off the presses. It's our new um, a new battery, which uh, I'm told by Dawson under threat of death that uh, I, I need to get it out in the next uh, few months. Otherwise, uh, uh, I'm under severe pressure. So this uh, isn't 1.6 meters long. Is no, it? this is more like a meter or so. So long. The, the the new Eon replacement or upgrade is still uh, in parallel. It's it's not intended to be a replacement. It's uh, intended to suit different markets. It's shorter. It's a bit heavier. <coughs> um, it's, You've got um, a cut down version. I've there, got really? a cut down version. Yeah. Um, this was done on a three V solid. It's actually got four batteries inside there. Uh, this so this is a plastic version. Oh, that looks about half the length of that. So yeah, well, the real version will be um, about yay. Yep. And it'll have twenty two cells in there, not twenty one, because the, um, the existing Eon battery, which we call the Toblerone. Yep. Because it looks like a, a Toblerone. It looks like a, a more triangular sort of um, shape. <coughs> uh, this is a bit fatter. Um, this is uh, the rocky road. It's a rocky road. <laughs> <laughs> we might use that as the, the new internal name. Uh, How many cells do you say? Fitting? 22. All oh, right, so you've got slightly yeah. higher yeah. Um, pack voltage. I think Max might have put eight in there, actually. I don't actually, actually know what it is. This is actually heavy. So It is actually heavy. Right, so. yeah. Oh yeah. oh, yeah, oh, yeah, it's heavy. It a fair bit. I mean, actually, it's one of the things to consider, that lithium titanate is less energy dense than that's one nickel of manganese cobalt. That's, that's the downsides. I mean, it's got two downsides that I know of. Yeah. One is cost yep. uh, per the upfront cost per stored kilowatt hour in raw terms um, uh, but also uh, weight it's twice as heavy yeah uh, given the storage and twice the volume yeah yeah so it's it, it's, a, it's a bigger thing but we figure it's uh, it's not intended for motorbikes so no much. I mean streets are hit of lead acid for it's, a start yeah it's <laughs> twice as twice as energy dense as lead acid yeah uh, so that's some of its major major advantages there of, of um, performance but things like um, weight is not strictly an issue in solar um, it is an issue on us because we got to mount it we got to make it secure we got to do all that sort of stuff um, but uh, we believe that uh, you end up with a, a more useful product but it's interesting to compare. So, yeah, before we put that away yeah. um, I'm just trying to get the picture this is stackable then so you can have multiples on top of each other is that the plan um, the plan at the moment is these this can go in in um, series or parallel but physically how, physically can... um max uh, our designer is going to make a little stacking bracket oh, to yeah. house these things yep. so they can either go that away yep which is less probable um but uh it'll be stackable no doubt in that sort of way i was going to say that sort of way this means you've got orientation arrangements like yeah. like the aeon like, like the aeon and we'll if you're putting that. this in a garage you want it skinny so you can yeah. get your your that's ev right. in there that's right yeah, <laughs> and so right. like this provides yeah. a skinny form factor. That's right. Um, uh, so we have our connections on one end, and are they series and parallel? Uh, they can be series, uh, series or parallel. Right. So you there's can do high two, voltage. Th yeah, there's gonna be two flavors of this coming out. Yeah. Uh, one is intended for 48 volts. Yes. Which is actually a little bit more than 48 volts. It'd be more like a 50 volt, um, and or put in twos and threes and fours in in series with a separate circuit breaker box. Yeah. Um, uh, is it a combiner which, box that all the strings go into? Yes. 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 Gotcha. Um, uh, so in parallel, they have their own individual circuit breakers, mm. um, but in series, it'll be one separate box at the end, and they all talk to that box. Right. Um, but that's the the plan. This was uh, made out of plastic, um, just as a final validation. Currently, uh, the molds are being made. Right. And, uh, so this is a three D printed prototype. This is a three D printed prototype, and our printer. It's about yay big, yeah. so um, yeah, right. You know, it's, it's uh, that's about the, the the biggest we can handle, and so um, but it all came out very well, and uh, we're just physically waiting for stuff to uh, come back. So, in terms of comparison with the Aeon, which I know well, it's got twenty one cells, twenty two cells now, and this the, has the, got twenty two. Twenty two, yeah. The Aeon is twenty one. This is twenty two. So that higher pack voltage it, better suits many sort of general inverters yeah, for uh, that acid. So that's design. right because. Um, We've had uh, some criticisms uh, that we're, uh, our lower, lower voltage is like 43 volts or so. That's starting to get low for some inverters, mm. um, and they would prefer 
the, the, the lower volts would be closer to 46. Yep. Um, fortunately, the, uh, the new chemistry cells that we've got, because they vary the chemistry slightly on us, uh, has a flatter curve. And so oh. the, um, the upper voltage per cell used to be something like 2.64 at the knee yeah. point, and now it's 2.45 at the knee. Right. And so it, uh, uh, the actual um, slope is more controlled. It's not going up as yes. much, it's more controlled. And so the upper voltage of, our, of, of this uh, battery will be, uh, let me think, something like uh, about 58 volts. Wow, okay. Um, so we operate between 46 and 58. Okay. Yeah. Don't go over 60. Don't go over 60. Because ASNZS 5139 will put you into uh, DVCB. Yep. And suddenly protection goes up quite a lot. Yeah. Yep. Well, that was actually the thought that I had. Uh, but with <laughs> the old cells, I couldn't go 22 cells easily because um, at uh, if you go 2.65 or even 2.7 volts, let's say, um, where it can get to um, times 22, you start to scratch onto 60 you know now i've got some notes here to make sure i remembered everything so um yeah. we're, we're we're basically going from talking about why you chose lithium titanate in fact i'm quite impressed by the whole approach which is you went 360 degree energy storage what are all the options right mm. so you talked about flywheel yeah. um gravitational, uh, gravitational other um, other chemical uh, uh, forms and then you then you move towards um, a, a battery system that could be installed on a panel under on a roof, but then yeah. heat was a problem. Yeah. They got you looking at heat tolerance of cells, yes. and you discovered these. Well, yes. you're Chris, was Chris your Chris. engineer? Yeah. Chris. Um, so, but you didn't end up making solar panels with batteries on them. No, um, weight was an issue yep. in the end, and also it was starting to be a little bit too non-conformist. Uh, as much as I like not conforming, you know, we had to conform a, a wee bit. Uh, I suppose where we're different to the pack uh, largely is that we went for a modular solution that uh, the batteries can be um, uh, stacked in, you know, you buy two or three initially and, oh, I need another battery, uh, I'll buy another. At, at home, I've got six Eon batteries myself and I'm thinking to myself, shall I go to eight? It's, uh, eight eight's, uh, we just a bit better, but economically, I think I'm at the optimum point at six. Yes. You know what I mean? There's an economic optimum point. You're cycling point, it fully. And there's my psychological yeah. optimum point where I want that eight. Yeah. You know, it so looks nice on the wall. It looks nicer on the wall. <laughs> so uh, I'm thinking about, oh, will Dawson give me a better price than that battery? And he's a hard man. I think that's one of your kind of unique selling points. It's an aesthetically very interesting object, the Aeon. Yes. You yes. know, the Toblerone design. The Toblerone design, um, yeah. And it can go in almost any orientation except upward towards the, the circuit breaker. Um, no, you can, you, you can go upwards providing it's covered oh, okay we just so water doesn't pool, pool around the circuit even though it is ip65 seal you still don't want water no pooling no around yeah. that sort of thing no so, entries. yeah yeah so but um cool but uh it, 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 the, the modular concept works well in terms of customers um because <clears throat> we're we're kind of funny we usually recommend for um on-grid customers to buy less batteries um because we want customers to f absolutely flog the batteries because these batteries can be charged and discharged close to 100%. They actually can go 100% with no damage, but then they get a bit out of balance and so you've got more balancing issues uh, to, to take care of later. So let's say 95, 96% of the battery is fully utilised um, and that uh, and it's not deteriorating like other batteries do over its life. It's good for you know, 22,000 cycles we warranty for. And um, and even then we know that it's gonna be probably somewhere between 90 and, uh, and 85% uh, capacity, even after that sort of life. And so um, it's it's a lifetime product. Um, an interesting comparison though, uh, and, and one of our problems that we have is relating um, the, the upfront cost of this battery because um, <clears throat> not mentioning any names of uh, other companies, but for example, um, we compared after you allow for the charge discharge efficiency because these are ninety seven point five percent efficient. The, the the full use of its range, the, the full um, charge discharge, and if you allow for um, uh, its deterioration over its lifetime and a few other factors, it turns out that 
uh, an unnamed battery that might start with T um, that's 13.5 kilowatt hours, when you compare its energy stored over the life of that unnamed battery. So it's through energy throughput. It's energy throughput. Yeah, gotcha. Yep. Um, around seven kilowatt hours of LTO technology will, over the life of the test, the, the, the T word, <laughs> the T word, there'll be a goat sound coming over. Yes, there will. We'll bleep that one out. <laughs> yeah. um, but uh, over the lifetime of the T word, um, they will store the same amount of energy because the other product is um, its efficiency is dropping, its, 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 uh, its storage capacity is dropping over its life. There are other factors like temperature, uh, derating and whatever coming in there. And so, the, 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 yes, we're more expensive up front, but it's very hard to relate energy capacities of um, throughput. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, at, at the end of the X years that the, um, uh, the LiPo goes for, these keep on going. And so, um, so what's the warranty on, say, the <coughs> cell pack like the Aeon? On the Aeon, uh, it's currently twenty years. Twenty years. Twenty years. Yeah. That must be the longest warranty in the energy storage I market. I think it might be. Wow, um, twenty years. And, so, what yeah. sort of cycle can you get out of a cell like this? How many cycles? Uh, well, it's unknown to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anybody's actually pushed them that far. I've got test results um, that China are actually done. We haven't gone as far as they have. Um, that um, that uh, we're still seeing they're fine after twenty five thousand cycles. Doing, I think, on that test, I wow. think it was I think was it a two C uh, charge discharge? They were doing it. And it was twenty five thousand cycles, and it was um, a re somewhere about eighty seven percent capacity. Uh, yes. I think after that, um, so, uh, so two C is a pretty unrealistic uh, sort of. Uh, Load. 25,000. So unless you're a millennial, you're probably not going to have time to buy another one. No, that's right. <laughs> Your that's, life's not going to be long enough. Yeah, I'll, You'll be in an aged care facility before uh, this thing's died. I think I'll be <laughs> drilling into a bucket by the time mine's, mine's had it. Wow. We, 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 we say that it's a, a generational battery that we, we can pass it on to our grandkids. Yeah, yeah. So it's a, But I think that's an important thing because um, given that people tend to stay in houses for eight or ten years and then they move to another house, um, if if you buy a conventional battery, you basically got a, after eight or ten years, you've got something that's close to a boat anchor. It's not useful. Yes. And so, does it actually add to the asset value of that house? I'm not sure it does. Um, whereas I think you can argue with ours, it actually does add to the asset value of the house, and it's something you can hopefully forget about. Yes. So this is often called total cost of ownership, which yes. is when you consider the purchase price over the service life of the product and the amount of energy it can uh, uh, move for you. So yeah. in, in the case of if you've got free solar yep. and you're storing it in a battery yep. and you can do it for 20 years, yes. that's a lot of that's free energy free that you've energy. moved, Absolutely. which you haven't exported to the grid. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And so that starts to look good when you amortise it over that 20-year period. Yeah, yeah. So hence the, the lifetime battery. Yeah, and uh, given that um, well, I was over at... Uh, West Australia a few weeks ago visiting a customer's site in Perth and uh, uh, he, he uh, told me that they're only getting two cents per kilowatt hour uh, in off-peak times. I think they get something uh, more well, We've more got realistic. negative pricing now in South Australia. Have they? Oh, yes. You, yeah. you, they charge you if you export at certain times of the day. Oh, isn't that lovely? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it'll come everywhere, so yeah. don't worry. But you, you don't. The, the rule will be: use your energy and yeah. store it. Don't yeah. ever think about exporting it. Yeah, that's because <laughs> the grid doesn't want it. I mean, yeah, I don't know how many gigawatts we've now got on a, of solar on. That's Australia. one of the thoughts in my own house that I'm thinking. Of, well, they're, they're going to do that soon. <laughs> I, I think I will go to those extra two batteries, and uh, we'll see how we go. Now, just circling back to. Um, uh, balancing now for yep. for those in the audience who haven't heard this term cell balancing mm -hmm. we've got 22 of these right um, and they're all charged in series they're charged in series we, yep. and so I guess the problem is that because in manufacturing there's always a slight variation correct um, some of them will be uh, reached um, target voltage sooner than others that's right so you have to manage that somehow that's right and that's what balancing is exactly all right I think I've just explained it. You've done a very good job. <laughs> I, was, I was learning as I was going along there, by the way. <laughs> that's, oh, what, that's, that's what all these little things are for, right? Uh, they, they are. And, uh, um, uh, there's actually uh, 22 little circuits on yep. there, all yep. in um, in series. They're all floating as isolated entities. And um, one of the difficulties is that uh, these cells are only nominally 2.3 volts. 
uh, in practicality, you have to allow for these cells uh, being flat and discharged, say at 1.5 or even below. And so the circuitry has still got to be logical and, and re reasonable, you know, down to one volt or so. Wow. Which starts to get a bit hard on the electronics at mm -hmm. one volt type levels. Uh, we've done it. Uh, I do see some other technologies coming on board, um, uh, the, like the rust batteries, the iron, whatever it is, uh, and they're more like one volt per cell. Yeah. I frankly don't know how I'm gonna, how I'll do to BMS for yeah, that. Yeah, I mean the forward voltage on your semiconductors is it's getting point, close yeah, to that. It's getting close <laughs> to that, so uh, they've got a challenge. I can see how you can do it. Yeah. You'd have to create lots of little isolated floating power supplies you know, and, and lots of uh, transformers and it starts getting expensive doing that. In our case, no, we, we, we managed to get, you know, logic and chips to work quite happily at those voltages, which it does. Um, <clears throat> but the other thing that people go, oh, gee, that looks a bit primitive. Yeah, yeah you're right, it is. Um, we've, um, we've gone for the dumbest and uh, most basic type of balancing which is the resistive shunt balancing. and So it's top balance, so when the batteries get to a certain target voltage, yes. then you shunt the current past that cell. Um, when the cell gets past um, its target voltage. Yeah. Yeah, each and each, yeah. any. Uh, so this one gets to 2.6, whatever it was. Whatever it was. And, and so then you start shunting, instead of going yeah. through the here, it will go through it some resistors. It bypasses a bit. A little bit. And yep. it's it's just like, uh, but it's not like you're bypassing a lot, because like you're saying, you're often dealing with just tolerance issues. And it's at the end of and, charge anyway, yeah. so that you're really just down to a trickle now. Yeah, and exactly. And so um, the inverter cycling back. Yeah. So typically it's, it's very much like if you've got a scale or a, a seesaw and somebody's a bit too heavy on one side, you know, you can just tip it by putting a bit of extra weight. Okay. One of my, my best friends, by the way, uh, 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 we worked out one day that if we put him first, uh, his daughter second and his wife third, because they're all light, and I'm at the other end, I was going to overbalance all, my 120 kilograms were going to outbalance all three of them, but um, I, I digress. Uh, so coming back to balancing, yeah. does that mean uh, you need to ensure that the battery achieves a balance at a certain interval? Like you have to fully charge the battery every day, every week, every month? Um, in practicality, it's every week or so. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's uh, one of the reasons why you don't have too much battery. Like you're saying, you've got six, and you're thinking about getting eight. Yeah. But actually, you might not. On weather Correct. like we've had. Correct. With eight, you might not fully charge it. Really. Yeah. In winter time, it may never get there. And, so uh, actually, having too big a battery is actually is, a problem. Yeah, because it could go out of balance, and you, you suddenly don't get the full utilization of your battery. Yeah. Uh, and and that's a major trap. Yeah. And so, um, I know Dawson, my partner's done calculations on that, and. Um, given that the average person out there, say, has got 20 solar panels, yeah. in, winter, in weather like today, because it's about three degrees here at the moment, um, in weather like today and cloudy, uh, you, the battery may in fact uh, not get to a situation where it balances for weeks. Yeah. Um, and so it is important to uh, frash it. But the problem with normal battery technologies like LiPos and stuff is uh, uh, when you frash it, um, that really does age them. You know, when you, you don't necessarily want to push them to 100% charge, 100% discharge, because that, that's going to age them very badly. In our case, we say, yeah, please do it. Um, uh, in my case, with my 73 solar panels on my house, I'm going to get that charge. Right. I'm going to get that. You <laughs> Jeez, know. you're an overachiever. 73 I'm, solar 73, panels. 73. Wow. Yeah. Because yeah. it, it was a philosophical thing of uh, I, um, I uh, it came from a flight to Sydney, looking down near Mascot, and all those roofs, I go, oh, gee, I'd like to cover those roofs. <laughs> and uh, my, my roof was my roof was like 40 years old and was even doing a full change of the roof or a cheap and cheerful fix and covered a whole bloody thing with solar panels, including walkways. And it um, uh, so uh, it, it, economically it worked out very well, actually. It was cheaper than the roof fix. And I've got 73 panels covering the whole thing. And... Uh, um, but e even on a day like today, uh, you do occasionally get your days that where um, I used to say to, it's a ratio of about 16 to 1. The best day to worst day uh, in terms of generation was about 16 to 1. No, it's actually 20 to 1 I found recently. I, I found it at, uh, one day recently where my, even, even my generation, um, 
I still remember my, the best I've done was 165 kilowatt hours on a day uh, in my house. And I, I still remember one day it got down to um, eight kilowatt hours. Yeah. So it's a, it's a ratio of 21 and that's what you've got to allow for. Yeah, yeah. And most people don't don't think about that. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, my, my, my number one advice to everybody out there, and it's... It's so you not, what you over 100 kilowatts of solar? Yeah, 165. Uh, well, no, uh, I've got 27 kilowatts of power. Oh, sorry, yeah. kilowatt hours of energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, kilowatt hours. Wow. And uh, 27 kilowatt hours on, on the roof. But uh, my number one advice to everybody is just go nuts on uh, solar panels. Mm. My, my second bit of advice, and again, it doesn't profit me in batteries at all. And people say, oh, but you know the sun's pointing that way, and I've got to point all my um, thing, there's no point in putting arrays pointing the other way. It might have an angled roof like that. And I say, well, yes, there is a very good point to putting panels on the other side, and that's called clouds. Um, on cloudy days, it makes no difference. Makes no, you can point point the array that way, that way. <laughs> Who cares? It's the same. And, and it's cloudy days, which are the limiting factor. Yeah. That's the limiting factor. You want to get that generation on cloudy days. On sunny days, you... I'm totally with you. Like, yeah. I call South the new black because <laughs> basically it's empty. It's empty. And it's Go there. It. Fill yeah. it up. Fill it up. <laughs> yep. Just so fill up your roofs. Yeah. Um, uh, so I'm being world's best friend to the uh, solar cell manufacturers yeah. here. But again, it, it does, um, it broadens your, um, uh, like my, my, my arrays are. W shape, so um, east west facing both ways. So you get a better spread in the morning. Yeah, the so you got more flat production curve. Yeah, and the middle of the day, it's not quite as much because you've got that angle. So yes. It's a little bit off angle, but you don't want yes. a huge generation in the middle of the day. We could speak for hours on orientation. Um, we could. I totally agree with you. Basically, yeah. the, the rule of thumb is just cover your roof. Cover your roof. Yeah. Just do it. Yeah. And now, th sorry, there's a second, there's another point. Oh, oh really? There okay. is. It's, um, it acts as great insulation. Yes. It yes, really does. It does. Because I remember no direct sunlight I, on your, on the roof. I, I remember touching the roof one day on a really hot day, mm -hmm. and it's, it's it's hot. And these days, even on a forty something degree day, it's cold. Yeah, you know, it's just great. I mean, people have had fixed caravans and parks for years have done the same thing: put yeah. a tin roof over the top of their caravan yeah. to keep the sun off. Well, that's what a solar panel is on exactly. top of your roof. It's a, exactly. So, Tepney House doesn't look like a caravan. That's right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> now, moving on to this little thing. What's this? This here? little thing. Um, well, before we move on to this little shiny object, oh, this it's, is, it's part of something else. It's part of something else, which I'm going to drag up here, and to show you how incredibly, Whoa, incredibly my... strong I am. Wow! This is a module which goes into our new, uh, what we call the Eternity battery, and um, oh, I can see the, the shapes where the cells would go. Mm, I'm really not quite that strong because it's empty. Yes. Uh, <laughs> um, normally, this houses uh, sixteen. 16 of those um, lithium titanate cells. 16? 16, 16. Okay. All in parallel. Oh, in parallel. All in parallel. Right, so, so you this, need multiples of these yeah. to achieve whatever it, target voltage. It's a good thing to have a lot of these in series. So this is one dirty big 2.3 volt cell. Yes. Um, and uh, I'm just been, trying to do the sums in my head. How many, how many kilowatt hours would you get in this one? Uh, I can't remember, but it was something about one and a half. Right. Yeah. Okay. About one and a half kilowatt hours. And the, and the potential current The current, current this? is unspeakable. <laughs> the hints of the bus bars. They're monsters. Um, they're monsters up the back. That's a that's a knife switch. Yeah, I'm, it is. Should, yeah, I'll just turn yeah, it to the camera. Yeah, yeah. So these are, are these hot swappable? <laughs> Not really. But the, um, you, you plug them in, basically. You plug them in. Yeah. You plug them in. There will be a bit of an arc otherwise. Yep. Yeah. And we, wow. we spent, oh, gee, close on to a year researching contacts, contact materials. Mm. Uh, trying all sorts of combinations, and boy, did we find uh, stuff we didn't understand. So, why did you go to the trouble of having a, a, a nice switch arrangement? Why not just like hardwired? Um, servicing. Servicing, right? Servicing. So um, these are modules that hit the handles. Yeah. You can just pull them out, pull them swap out. a freshie in. Yeah, that's right. Wow. Uh, it was just, it just um, I don't know if you if you've got a problem in a huge monster battery. You, yeah. You know, you'd want to be able to get it. It could be the circuitry because each, um, it's unlikely to have a problem in the cells. Yeah. If you're going to get a problem, it could be electronics. Yeah. In which case, you know, you've got to get at it, do a hot swap, bang, go no, for not it. Not hot. No, no, get, do a uh, <laughs> cold swap. Cold swap. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, but one of the uh, 
Hang on, things. I'm just thinking about the amps on this for a second. I know that these can do over a thousand amps, right? Oh yeah, that can go nuts. One cell, and you've got yeah. 16 in here. Yeah, yeah. 16,000 amps. <laughs> the, the current in this um, is really limited by your bus bars yeah. and that sort of material. Uh, and that was the challenge in the end. How do we uh, keep the voltage drops right for it? And um, we're happy to say right now that on um, uh, if if it's externally controlled through comms, we can do a two two C charge and discharge happily on this. Uh, if it's not, we can do a. Can you explain two C? Uh, yeah, sorry, two uh, C means essentially twice its rated continuous current. So, so this so is a, a forty amp hour cell. Forty amp hour at, at two C. That means you're doing a, a, a charge of that in half an hour. And so you can charge it at eighty amps. You can charge at eighty amps for half an hour. Half an hour. Wow, and, and got this thing is unspeakable amps. Yes, uh, <laughs> amps for, for half an hour. For, for half an hour. Jeez. Um, and the limitation is your contacts and stuff like that. And uh, we found really interesting things, like you know, just one interesting thing, just for a discussion point. Um, these are all spring fingers, as you can see in there. Mm. And you would think, given Ohm's law and current sharing, that if you put two two spring fingers in, you'll halve the losses and whatever. No, it doesn't work like that at all. You could put five or six of them and you'd think it's five or six times less resistance. No, it's not true. Um, it doesn't work that way. That's well. Charlie's law. It's Charlie's law. Right. Yeah. And so it was actually Max's law, our, the, the guy who'd done all the work on this. <laughs> and uh, so we spent a lot of time working out the best combination of materials, coatings and stuff on that. And um, we think we've got there. Um, and yeah, and the other aspect of this whole design is safety. That I can happily whack my fingers any which way. Um, and there's two point three volts. It's two point three volts. Um, yeah. You'd you have know, to put a spanner, and you couldn't. You get couldn't it in get there. a spanner in there because it's so it, it's IP it's IP two X basically. Yeah, you can't get a test finger in there. That's right. You can't get a test finger. It's my pinky's a bit smaller than a test finger. I still we, can't get one it. One of our engineers, <laughs> uh, Carly Wong, she's a so which which one is tiny. the test finger? <laughs> None of yours. Not, not my claws. <laughs> Twelve millimeters. That's yeah, it. <laughs> but uh, we've got an engineer, and, and she she actually gets through that test finger. Her fingers are <laughs> tiny, you know. So um, yeah. So uh, but yeah. So this is a module, which uh, there are uh, twenty two of these, up to twenty six of these. Uh, so it ends up being, um, you know, two meters tall, roughly uh, seven hundred and fifty kilograms. Um, just slightly heavier than me, and um, in each one of these modules, it gets one of these, which is our, our controller board, which again is a. So does it go on the end? It goes on the end. It's oh, plugged inside there. Yeah, right. And um, uh, the heatsink doesn't get real hot. Again, it's um, uh, it, it, typically speaking. Um, you know, one of these might be warm and the other ones are all cold and it sort of balances out in the end. So this controller board does the balancing? That does the balancing. Well, actually, they're all bolted together, right? So it's it's the pack mm. balance, isn't it's it? It's the pack balance. Right. That's right. Okay. Yeah, uh, because they have to be the same voltage because they've got It the can bus bypass, power. I think from memory, about 60 amps. Wow, that's a little thing. That little thing there, it'll bypass 60 amps. Yep. Um, but it's just a case of it's on and it's off. And So hence so it's got this big... The honking. dirty, great, big, honking heat sink there. Oh, I love the sound. Yeah. It's so nice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we've actually uh, done hot uh, hot tests in our, um, in, our, in our hot chamber. Yep. And um, where we heated it up, the chamber was over 50 degrees C, um, where we were running this at uh, 1 and 2 C operation. The big limitation is, of course, the circuit breaker. Um, the D-rates. Yeah, at 1 C, you're talking a 630 amp circuit breaker. Yeah. You know, so it's it's serious currents. Yeah. Yeah. So, where is this going to be used? Where's this product? Um, this product goes. Um, uh, it can go domestically um, to houses with big consumption. It can go to office blocks, mm -hmm. fact um, factories, um, and ultimately, right now, into containers where these are stacked in series and parallel combinations to. Higher voltage, say a thousand volts or eight hundred volts or so whatever. You've got your two meter rack, and you put sixteen of these in it, and yeah. you can get how many racks in a shipping container? Uh, about thirty four for memory. For an eighty four to in a, forty in, footer, in sorry. Eighty four to get more. A, <laughs> you get more. I haven't seen an eighty uh, footer, but yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, 
Uh, but yeah, you, uh, you can stack them all in there, and you'll um, uh, so you get a bit over a megawatt, uh, yeah. megawatt hour of uh, storage in there. The, the limitations are there, are your safety limitations that you've got to be able to carry uh, a big bloke out on a stretcher. That's right. And uh, rescue, rescue. You and need so your one meter clearance. You, you, yeah, you, exactly. Yeah. And uh, that, that's your, your difficulty to squeeze all of that in there. Yeah, so you'd only get down one side of the container, wouldn't you? You wouldn't be able to do two, two rows? No, I've managed to squeeze it on two. Two? Yeah. With a metre in the middle? Yeah, we've, uh, we've had to do some specialist stuff on the container. Oh, okay. Uh, like pop sides out. Yeah, <laughs> pop the sides out, exactly. <laughs> but um, it varies which country it's going into. That, that standard yes. varies. It's, yes. it's all over the place. It's, it's Australia, about 3,000 defines that clearance, yeah. Yeah, that's now, right. Let's get real nerdy for a minute. Oh, um, here we go, yeah. <laughs> IEC 62619, yep. uh, which is a uh, industrial uh, International Electric Commission mm -hmm. standard for safety of industrial applications of yep. lithium-ion batteries, yep. and it's also kind of like a roadblock in Australia to being listed on the CC um, approved products list. That's right. Have you got IEC? Yes. You have? We've got 62619, 62040 also. Um, so we've, uh, we got that... Uh, I believe, in fact, we were the first to get it. Uh, other people were claiming it. I'm pretty sure we were the first. Um, oh, at least two years ago, I can't remember when. Yes. Um, and the interesting thing there was there was no um, facilities in Australia that could uh, that, that could test it. Because the fault currents that you can deal with, they probably don't have that yeah, capacity to that's test. Right. So we had to get it yeah. in China to do it. Yeah. And. Uh, we actually had to smuggle it across borders and stuff. <laughs> and it was it was uh, because you can't import batteries into it. But uh, so it was a smuggling operation in the end. Uh, to, to, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> eep, 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 goats. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but uh, so um, so um, the IEC standard uh, is the international one. But you know, if you're entering entering into the US market. Um, uh, UL's the big thing. That's right. And have you got UL for this? Um, watch this watch, watch this space. So it's currently in UL. We think it's potentially four weeks away. Um, well, we've been there. We've been in that process for months now. So UL nineteen seventy four. Yes. And the um, more arduous nine five four zero eight. Both of those. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I've actually had a little read of uh, 1974, and geez, it's a tough test. It's a the, tough test. I mean, the one where you put it in a pool of hydrocarbon and set fire to the battery <laughs> for 20 minutes, yeah. and then leave it for an hour, for a day, um, and see, it's still safe. They've also got tests where they essentially wrap it in a coil, yeah, and they heat it up to over 300 degrees C. Wow! And uh, to see if it combusts. Yeah. And uh, that was a hard one, even for us to get through, but we we have got through it. You haven't got through the military testing where they shoot it. Uh, no, but that sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, our our uh, senior engineer, Max, is a, a bow and arrow man, by the way. And, <laughs> and I know on the weekends he uses the side lane to the factory as his target range. But he's, he, um, Don't he, walk down there. he is looking at uh, bow and arrowing it. <laughs> you know, so. Wow, that's really impressive. But so we, we believe we'll have that. We've, had, um, we've got through all the hard bits of mm -hmm. the standard, and now it's hopefully more administrative. Yeah. And um, so we'll... Um, uh, we're we're sending these at the moment to Canada just shortly, mm -hmm. we're just awaiting the UL appro approvals for that, mm -hmm. and then you know down to uh, USA, and uh, um, then we'll storm through Poland and attack France after that, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> so, just the, in terms of product line, you've gone from um, wanting to put uh, storage on the back of panels on a roof, decided that's a bad idea. Bad idea. You made a one point nine kilowatt hour. One point nine three. Oh, I've got that three on there. Yep. Um, um, which is really a residential solution. That's right. Um, you've got your larger the yet large to be one, named, which is, um, which is about uh, two point. Uh, it'll be probably two point two. I and think. it's stackable, and it can be series or parallel. Yes. So that's a big change. The Aeon's only parallel, right? They're only parallel. So you can actually do high voltage battery that's stacks right. now, which is suiting uh, people like Selectronics more and yep. like uh, with their. Their latest range of uh, the 120 volt 120 battery. Volt. Yeah. yeah, right. And then CNI with the what are we calling this unit? Uh, that's called this is called the Eternity. 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 Because it lasts forever. I think Dawson thought of that name. Yep. Yep. Has it got a nice little like the guy from Sydney? He used to ride it and chalk on the footpath. Not yet. Not yet. It's probably not yet. We're working on that one. <laughs> Worth shot. And can you go to utility scale? Um, like megawatt? Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's the whole um, uh, intention of it. And. Uh, uh, roughly 
uh, a megawatt hour, a bit more actually per container. We actually start to on on uh, on containers we start to win out a bit because our losses are lower. Yeah. And uh, we can actually stack the cells closer together than uh, uh, lipos are. And so yes, it's heavy. Yes. But our capacity is improved on that because we have a very dense. Um, you know, I think from memory we can put them uh, three millimetres apart. If no, no issue at all. I can see this product being excellent from a utility perspective for uh, um, FCAS, mm. so frequency control and ancillary services, because you can cycle the hell out of it. Yeah, at two C. That's right. Geez, how many cycles a day? That's that's twelve oh, cycles a day. Yeah, that's right. And you've got a twenty-five thousand cycle life that you can play with. You can just bash it. You can just bash it. And, wow! And hopefully get a good return on it. And arbitrage as well. So just store right. that cheap energy yeah. and that's yeah. right. I know um, uh, um, we've got an eternity in Ballarat right now. R and J Batteries. They're running their their um, their premises of it. Yep. For the last few months and quite happily. And um, there's a whole bunch going out. Uh, I think in a week or so time. Uh, so. We are starting to roll these out as, as uh, big sausages, shall we say. You know? <laughs> yeah. And I know you're a vegan, so I'm sorry. I, this, was, this was a vegetarian sausage. They do make vegan sausages. They're very nice, actually. I have had them. I've had them. I've had them. <laughs> you can hardly tell the difference. That's right. Well, um, Charlie, I've just been fascinated by watching your company from, you know, from the early Aeon days to these enormous packs. It's just great to see yeah. how this has evolved. Now, it's also a great Australian story. You're manufacturing... Yes. Some of this, all of it, I'm not sure. Pretty well all of it is, is uh, finally assembled and tested in Australia, yep. uh, right down to nuts and bolts level. Um, we don't, for example, the uh, boards, we don't manufacture these in Australia anymore. We we used to be in a position we could do that, but we don't. Dawson had a factory uh, actually stuffed boards like that in Australia just a few years ago, but it's just no longer um, economic to do so. Um, the, the Asians are killing us on, on price and that. So stuff is made overseas, a lot of the stuff, but still there's a lot of stuff made in Australia on this and the final assembly is made uh, at our factory and tested and, and that way I can sleep nights. Right. You know, and, and, so you're in control of the final product. So we are. The, and, the quality uh, assurance. We are. Yeah. And it, it's good that way and we get immediate feedback if there's issues. And uh, the, the biggest problem we've had in the last year, though, has been, um, has been uh, COVID. Uh, with the uh, worldwide component shortage problems. Ah, uh, the chip shortage. Yeah. It's been a horrific year. Uh, every. Are we talking these things? We're talking those things. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I think every board that we've got in across the products has had to be redesigned three times in the last year or so. Yeah. And because okay, you go ah that component you can't get that for two years now, or it's it's now ten times more expensive, literally. Um, so, yep, redesign about something else. Guess what? That just dropped out. Redesign it again. And so we've had that. And yeah. uh, and then, of course, new components have different tolerance issues and whatever. And uh, and then on top of that, you've got um, our friends in China slightly changing the chemistry of the bat of the cell without telling us at one stage. And so you've got to control all these parameters and, uh, you know, be on the hop yep. um, to, to not make sure the system is 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 set right yeah. because of that but it's been a, a busy year <laughs> but we're, we're fine yeah. cool yeah um where can people get them from um right now we uh largely don't sell direct we sell through uh distributors mm -hmm. uh you uh, talk to ben at our end so uh, i'll put a, a link in the description so yeah. if those interested uh, can chase R up r and j batteries is our yeah for example one one of your distributors. Uh, one of our main distributors, right. and uh, there are some others. Yep. Um, and uh, but certainly linked to Ben would uh, fix it up. And if people have any support issues, are they talking to um, the distributor or are they talking to you? If they've got a support issue, please don't ring me. It drives me nuts. Right. Uh, I like to sleep. <laughs> yeah, I like to sleep. <laughs> nice. It's me. It's me. And uh, largely, uh, my uh, I was training up somebody to to take it over, and he he left us to go to. A, some place that's five minutes away from home, right? You know, and so right now it's back to being me, and uh, but I'm essentially on call twenty four hours a day. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, oh, that's yeah. pretty impressive. Yeah, but yeah, you, you, it's a direct, a direct line, and uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm stumped and flabbergasted. Yeah. I, I was joking when I said you don't get to sleep at night. Then, no, um, no, wow. No. Yeah. Okay, so you are you do do direct support. Oh, yeah. it's, it's it's direct support. Yeah. And, uh, 
uh, we really do back it up. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, we've had in the field, the biggest problem is ensuring the installers have set up the inverters correctly. Yeah. That's the number one biggest problem. Yeah, set and the voltage parameters, the charge current, yeah, yeah, and the shutdown voltage. All that sort of stuff and yeah. get it right. Do you have um, a cheat sheet that you you provide? We do, which is un under update all the time at the moment. Yeah. Because Every manufacturer has their own setting yeah. values that... Yeah, we, you know, we do. But yeah. it, it's under continuous update and there's more updates coming in it tomorrow. All right. Uh, that I know of. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, that's, that is that is the challenge at the moment. Um, but in terms of real... Um, faults. We haven't had a lot. Uh, after several thousand of the eons going out, I think there's four that were genuine faults. Where you know, I think one was impact damage, another one was um, we made a mistake somewhere internally. Yeah, but it, it, it's, the reliability experience has been quite good. Yeah, I mean, was. built on something that's so indestructible virtually as the lithium titanate. So you'd have to try. You have to try hard. You have to try very hard. So, <laughs> um, but I think uh, the other aspect, you know, and I'm switching partially to flog it mode right now. Yeah. Uh, and that's um, uh, when you sit down and do real economics of it, mm. um, uh, I'm afraid with every other te technology I know, uh, with the exception of lead acid, uh, you can't make it pay off easily within its life lifespan under typical con commercial. Yeah, I've, I've done those numbers too. Yeah. And I, I, I see solar quotes actually put you as like the lowest total cost of ownership by a country mile. Yeah, um, initially uh, we clocked in, I think it's seven cents per kilowatt hour where the pack was starting at 20 cents, 30 cents and upwards. Uh, and then there was some blowback by the industry to tell hey, you know, uh, that was based on us being able to stay, cycle three times a day. Um, and so they then modified the number to about 20 cents, I think it's 21 cents, um, based on one cycle a day. So we're comparing eggs with eggs. The other guys can't cycle three times a day, we can. Okay, but even on that, we're at the bottom end of the scale at 20 odd cents, where uh, most are doing say 30, 32 cents on a one cycle a day. I myself at home cycle you typically one and a half times a day. I don't, yeah. what, are you, what are you doing here? Uh, about once, about, about once a day. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. But I've got the big array and whatever, and I can do that. It's a bit complicated here. Yeah. There's, there's a microgrid, and it's cycling once That's, a day. Yeah. Um, pretty much fully. Yeah. Uh, and certainly in winter, we even have to run the generator for an hour in the morning at the moment. Yeah. yeah I'd expect that for sure. Yeah. 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 But, um, uh, but when you do the economics of it, um, uh, we expect over the life of the battery that um, it, it, will, it will pay off anywhere three to five times. Uh, over, you know, and the payback period, if you're flogging it really hard, uh, you might be able to pay it off in six years, which is not fabulous. Yeah. Um, and once again, it comes down something. to sizing. So if you actually yeah. size it small, so it cycles regularly, that's right. You're getting the best you, value. You get the fast payback, for, say six years. Yeah. Uh, but if you if if you're um, uh, not doing it that way, it might be 14 years. But, yeah. But you still get your money back, and it's not a, a wasted uh, donation you're you're making. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Oh, cool. Okay. Well, this has been great. Um, I think we should go and look at the Toberos. Why not? And sitting on the wall there. Okay. Okay, good. Let's do it. Excellent.